For over 150 years, Victorians of all ages have been drawn to the place where Don Bradman took on body line and scored a ton. Where Betty Cuthbert took gold, gold, gold. Where Jezza took to the clouds. Where Jagger took to the stage. And Warney took his hat trick. Oh, he's gone, it's a hat trick! The place that once stood at the edge of a colonial town and is now the beating heart of a great cosmopolitan city. The MCG. My earliest recollection of the Melbourne Cricket Ground was back in 1936 when my brother, who was 10 years older than me, brought me to a cricket match here. I remember it was a very, very hot day. Well, cricket is a summer sport, so you expect that. And I can remember seeing the players going out onto the field and various other aspects of the day. I've been very, very lucky that I've been able to pursue my interest in cricket and football, working in a place that I consider to be almost the, the cathedral of sport in Australia. Today, the MCG is one of the world's greatest sporting arenas. The magnificent Ponsford, Olympic and MCC member stands, completed in 2006, have provided a perfect complement to the soon to be refurbished Great Southern Stand. The MCG delivers a breathtaking experience for all those who cheer from the stands or tread upon its hallowed turf. It was on this hallowed surface in 1877 that Test Cricket was born, with Australia's shock 45-run victory over mighty Mother England. A margin that, amazingly, was repeated 100 years later in the Centenary Test. It's also where our young country stepped onto the world stage for the first time, hosting the 1956 Olympics. And where millions of fans have witnessed 100 grand finals since 1902. It's seen amazing highs, hosting rugby union and rugby league's biggest games. And heartbreaking lows, like the Socceroos' failure to qualify for the 1998 World Cup. But through it all, the MCG has always done us proud, just as it will continue to do into the future. Well, just to look around this place, bring, it brings back a lot of uh, memories. I know it's been changed since uh, I started here. But when you describe where it is, it's in the middle of a beautiful area, not far from the river. And there's sloping hills just outside with many trees, and it's about a, a K from the, the centre of the city, which has got four million people. I mean, it's. It's a lot to be proud of. Though famous for major sporting events, the MCG has also been the venue for much more. It's hosted musical superstars like the Rolling Stones, David Bowie, Michael Jackson and the Three Tenors. And devotional leaders like Billy Graham in 1959 and Pope John Paul II in 1986. It even played its part in the Allied war effort during World War II, becoming a base for the US military. Today, the MCG offers facilities and technology that make it capable of hosting almost any kind of event. My very first memory of the G is coming to see Carlton play as a kid. It was something that, as a Melbourne person, you grow up knowing the G feeling like it's part of you and feeling like it's part of your family. So to actually walk through the doors and come and sit down and, and watch your team play, I remember was a fantastic feeling. Magnificent as it is, the MCG is more than just a great stadium. It's also a great tourist destination and a wonderful place for locals to have a day out. Every year it attracts thousands of visitors for MCG tours and to the National Sports Museum. It's also a unique location for corporate hospitality, on game days or on any day at all. But no matter what you come for, the footy, cricket, rugby or soccer, rock and roll or religion, or just a kick on the ground before the game, the MCG is a rite of passage for every Victorian. Because when you're at the MCG, 
you're in the place that's been the living, breathing heart of Melbourne for over 150 years. 